In this video, we're going to discuss process costing, which stands out in contrast to what we talked about before, which is job order costing. And the key difference between these two is that with process costing, uh, we have, we're dealing with a homogeneous product, right? So we're dealing with something like oil, right? Uh, five quarts of oil over here is indistinguishable from five quarts of oil over here. If we're just talking about standard oil. Now, job order costing, we actually got uh, uh, some heterogeneous uh, products, and so we end up with a job cost ticket, right? So we'll have like somebody says, okay, I want uh, two chairs, a table, I want these different things, and, and that's in the job cost sheet. So we say like, okay, this is job 511. Uh, 511A, and then we would go ahead and, and put the, the materials cost, we put the direct labor, the overhead, all these things would be charged to a job. But in, in process costing, because all the, all the jobs, so to speak, it's basically the same product, it's all just oil, right? So we don't really need like a different job ticket for each thing. So what we do is we just allocate uh, the costs or do the cost flows uh, through departments, right? So instead of having uh, what we have under the job order costing, well, we might have hundreds of jobs, right? We might have uh, uh, thousands of these job cost sheets, and, and that's basically how our costs are, are flowing, right? They're flowing through these jobs. Instead, we're flowing our, all our costs are just going through the departments. For example, like processing the oil, uh, packaging it for sale, those types of things. So so it's actually a little bit easier uh, dealing with process costing as, as opposed to job order costing because just all the costs just get dumped uh, and come right through these departments instead of a bunch of individualized jobs. So let's take a look in an example of how process costing would, would look for a firm. So uh, let's say in our example that you make cookies. This is a cookie factory. So you, you produce cookies. And let's just say there's probably a lot more to cookies than I'll ever know. Uh, but let's just say that we've got three departments, right? So in our cooking, uh, we've got the preparation. That's like getting the dough and get, getting the dough ready to go into the oven. Uh, then actually baking the dough, baking the cookie dough and, and baking the cookies. And then we've got packaging, right? Because after we, we make the cookie, we have to actually put it in packages to, to get it ready for sale. So we've got we've got these three departments here, all right? So these are our departments, and so what we're going to do is let's just draw a, a little little value chain here. Excuse me, just kind of an idea of how how, how value is being created. So we're taking uh, raw materials. That's our that's what we start with, right? This dough, and we basically we bring it into the prep department. Right, we start prepping the cookie dough, and of course we're adding in uh, labor and stuff. Uh, and let, I shouldn't say stuff. Uh, manufacturing overhead; these types of things are, are coming in at this point in the process. Right, and then once we've done kind of the preparation, that first that first stage. Now we move on to the baking. We bake the cookies. Just put bake, and then we package. We now. What, when things are, or when our product is going through here, it's really in process, right? So we'll call it work in process, right? That's work in process inventory, which we've talked about before. And then ultimately it goes to finished goods. And then I've run out of space here. So I'll say uh, after things are transferred out of finished goods, ultimately it's when we sell them, and they go to cost of goods sold, which I'll just abbreviate COGS. So what we really want to focus on mainly is is the difference with process costing is we're going to have a whip account here with these three we're going to have this this whip account we're going to have a whip account for prep we're going to have a whip account for baking and a whip account for packaging three different whip accounts whereas under job order costing there's just one whip account just one work in process account uh, under inventory but we're going to have one for each each department and if you had two departments then you would have two whip accounts under process costing and so we're going to start with these raw materials and then as they're requisitioned uh, it's going to go into the whip account for prep and then as we uh, move our cookies from dough to actually being in the oven we're going to take the whip 
uh, and decrease our whip for the prep, and then we're going to increase our whip account for baking. So let's look at, at some journal entries, uh, and that'll make it a little bit, a little bit maybe easier for you to, to understand when we look at how the, the entries will play out. So so let's start in the beginning. We'll say we've got our um, we're requisition, requisitioning, so we requisition raw materials. Requisition raw materials. Okay, and let's say that we requisition for for each process. Um, or let's say let, let's take a look here. Let me just say we'll have whip for prep. Now this is our initial dough, right? We're just saying okay, we we need some dough here, and let's say that we take uh, one hundred and five thousand dollars worth. Then we also need some some we've got some action here with the baking. Uh, and then we've got with the packaging. Now you might think, okay, well, what kind of materials uh, could we use for packaging? Well, we're going to have uh, plastic, for example. You know, it would be our would be our input here. Uh, when we think about the prep, obviously the cookie dough, maybe the baking, there's some kind of oil. So we'll just say we've got a debit of 105,000 to the WIP account for the prep. Right, the prep department, and then for baking, we'll say that it's uh, three thousand dollars of raw materials, and then we've got twelve thousand for the packaging, uh, and then we'll just credit, we'll credit raw materials. We'll just abbreviate here raw mats, and that adds up to one hundred and twenty thousand. So this is our journal entry. We just we're just taking some raw materials, and, and we're putting them into action. Here. And we've got again now we've got a whip account for each department. Now, as we go forward, we can also we're, we're going to apply direct labor, right? So obviously, when we go and actually have people that we pay to put the the cookies in the oven, people we pay to lay the dough out, and all those things, we're applying direct labor. And what's going to happen is just just like job order costing. Now we're going to have those direct labor costs flow through into the work in process account. So let's, but but again, the difference from job order costing, now we're going to have the three separate WIP accounts. So we'll have WIP for prep, we'll have a WIP for baking. This is as we have, have people actually do direct labor in each of these departments, and then the WIP for packaging. Okay, so now Let's just say that the, the amounts here, let's say we're talking about uh, $3,000 of direct labor for the prep, $5,000 for banking, and $6,000 for packaging. And then well, what do we credit? Well, we just credit wages payable. Wages payable for the total amount. That should be $14,000. Okay, so this is now we're accounting here for the direct labor that has been applied to the product, and now it's that the cost of that labor is flowing through to work in process, right? We've applied some some labor, some work uh, to our product, and so we've got work in process. We don't have a finished cookie yet, uh, but we've got some work in process. Now we would do the same thing, uh, essentially, for when we do the application of the overhead. So when we apply the overhead, oh, let me apply overhead. We're gonna we're just gonna have these three WIP accounts, right? And then we're gonna have a credit to the manufacturing overhead. So I'm not gonna write all these out again, but I'll just tell you that instead of having wages payable, you'd have the overhead right here. Okay? So that gives you an idea of, of how the costs flow through the system. Now what about uh, between departments? Because if you if you remember, we say, okay. We go and we take the dough, we apply some labor to it, we do these things, we, this in our prep department. But eventually, at some point, we move it to the baking department. So how do those costs flow between departments, right? We've just kind of talked about kind of putting raw materials in and doing some labor at each stage. But what about in, in between these departments? How would the cost flow? What would the, the journal entries look like? Well, let me cross this out because we're not dealing with that anymore. So what you would do, let's say... Uh, so now we're saying between departments. So let's say that we had 
$47,000 worth of uh, you know, whip that we've done in the, in the prep department. And now we want to transfer that. Uh, we've done $47,000 worth of work, and now we want to transfer it to the next department, which is baking. We're ready to put the $47,000 worth of, of whip into the oven. Uh, so what do we do? Well, we're going to take, uh, we're going to be adding to the whip account for baking. So we're going to make a debit there of $47,000. Right? And then we're going to credit or reduce because remember, WIP is an, an inventory account. It's an asset. It's going to re reduce with a, a credit, forty-seven thousand. Okay. So what we've done here is we just say we're going to reduce the the prep department's WIP account, and then we're going to increase the baking department's WIP account. So that's just the, it's, we're just transferring the flows, or excuse me, the costs. They're just flowing right through the system, right? We requisition the raw materials, but now we're saying okay, in between departments. We're moving along the work in process as we're processing this cookie and getting it to complete the completed state, which will be at finished goods. So now, if we said, okay, well, how will we go getting costs? You know, once we've done the baking of, of this, how will we go to uh, the ultimate, um, the, the next step where we go to packaging? And again, you just do a similar process. You would just debit packaging. All right, and then you would credit the baking for whatever amounts it is that you're transferring. And then when you get to finished goods, now at that point, you credit, or excuse me, you debit finished goods inventory. Right Now you've got a finished cookie, and you're going to credit the packaging. So it's just, it's just that simple. We're just moving the cost along that, that value chain that we talked about. That so ultimately, of course, when we go and, and sell uh, our cookies we're, we're going to have when we're debiting cost of goods sold now it's actually getting to the income statement and then crediting the finished goods inventory as we get rid of the cookies